welcome to uh to youtube uh this is the beginning of cyclosure visual tools meeting 18 and we will start with a round of introductions so uh, daniel uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves hi i'm daniel i do statistics usually and i'm a i'm a community organizer in cyclosure this community which is about data and science inclusion. So I uh, I guess on my screen, Yelena, you're the next one if we just follow the order. Uh would you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Yelena. Um I teach computer science at the University of Minnesota Morris, um, and I've been working for quite a while uh, on um, exploring beginner-friendly tools for um, teaching closure, in particular um, error messages, so modifying error messages, but also other things. And several of my students Former students became members of closure community, worked in various closure companies. Nice. Uh, then, Brian, you're the next on my screen. Hello, uh, my name is Brian. Uh, I am a software developer. I use closure primarily. Uh, I work at a company called Bright Health, um, and I love closure. Uh, perfect. Uh, I Ayn, if I pronounce your name correctly, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay. Uh, no, uh, no introduction from uh, I Ayn today then. Uh, Kira, uh, who, who is Kira? Hey, yeah, I'm Kira. I uh, write closure code by day for um, publishing data on the internet with a team based out of the UK. Uh, so mostly like backend web services and that kind of stuff. Uh, but I'm interested in this whole data science world and and closure stack for data science, uh, and am trying to help build some uh, like educational resources for that for kind of helping people get started. I think there's like a lot of really awesome tools that are pretty much ready to go and and you know maybe need some polishing. But I think one of the big gaps in the ecosystem is like. Um, just kind of like guides and tutorials and books and courses and stuff like that. So I've got too many projects underway uh, in that kind of vein. And then like part of it is a little bit selfish too. I'm like kind of using it as an opportunity to simultaneously like learn all of these tools and and things. Um, Cause I, I'm not a data scientist, but I find that stuff really cool. So um, yeah, anyway, that's me. I'm uh, I'm based on the East coast of Canada too. So joining you from uh, a lovely sunny day in Nova Scotia. Yeah, I, th I think uh, at some point we're all learning together. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so Jeremy, you're you're next on on my screen. I am uh, Jeremy from uh, France. First time I attend this uh, meeting, and I've been doing uh, closure, mostly closure script as a front end developer for. Uh, I don't know, eight years maybe. Um, and uh, I'm working at Pitch now for so a presentation uh, software, uh, building closure and closure script. And uh, I've been at Pitch for five years. Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, Timothy, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm Tim. I build a diagram app called Hummy. And uh, mainly just because I like graphs and diagrams. <laughs> uh, so some of the past um, episodes uh, that you put up online for this group, and it had a lot of really interesting uh, topics. So yeah, really excited to hear hear what gets discussed today and meet some people. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Theodore. Uh, so uh, the brain and uh, power behind this is Daniel. He just asked me to uh, to talk today, so he could uh, not say anything. Um, I worked as a developer, a civil engineer, and as a product manager. And I want to use Clojure for data science. So I'm really happy to see the ecosystem evolve. Um, I'm presenting a talk on the upcoming Babashka Conf, which is called Build Your Own Little Memex with Babashka, where I'm going to talk about building websites and building knowledge together. 
and I live in in Norway. Yeah, uh, so today uh, on the schedule, uh, we are first going to hear about uh, Jeremy uh, presenting his uh, tool and prototype mosaic. Uh, then we're going to move on to Kira, who will share an update about the Closure Data Science Cookbook. And then Daniel will share uh, updates about three different projects that he's working on, both Kindly, Clay, and Quarto. So uh, without further ado, uh, Jeremy, uh, would you like to present your prototype? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, how long do I have roughly to get an idea and to, to stop early? Yeah, so my notes say uh, about 30 minutes. Uh, so I think it's good to not spend too much time because we have uh, uh, the different things. Uh, but, yeah. but but take your time. And if there are questions, uh, I think it's good to, to ask them. Right. Yeah, if you're, st if you're still on the schedule, then all good. Um, share. Yeah. Um, I need to hide all the windows. Um, I have just one small screen, so I won't see you. So you have to ping me maybe to, to stop. Uh, yeah, only have my small laptop. Um, so th this is uh, Peach, and I'll just uh, show Peach to, just to kind of show the what kind of work I'm doing on a daily uh, basis. So I, I joined earlier uh, early, so um, as a front-end developer, so I worked on initially on the canvas and then moving things around, uh, resizing all the, the editor part. Uh, then I spent quite a lot of time thinking about layout and how to um, have some layouting capabilities like swapping or um, aligning or distributing without really adding too much complexity. Uh, so it stays like a, um, a presentation tool and doesn't become the design tool or something else. Um, and then I worked on the, the recording part where you can record yourself and have your face on the slide. And lastly, working on uh, animations. Um, so yeah, just just to show that I like really, I don't know, at pitch sometimes we say the front end of the front end. And um, yeah, this, my other project, uh, it's here. Um, so this is a uh, mosaic a prototype I'm working on. Um, a lot of it is inspired by Brett Victor. Um, I've been watching his videos, I don't know, every every year, every two years I watched again to a point where I don't really know anymore which ideas I'm coming from me <laughs> originally or him. Uh, so you might, if you're familiar, you might see a lot of uh, similitude. Um, but the way it works is, um, there is a canvas on the right part when I can draw a uh, rectangle, uh, circles, and uh, a row for now. So it's still a prototype because I'm not planning to do uh, or to ship a product at this point. I'm just really curious to see with this concept how far I can go. Uh, so that's why this limit, limited uh, number of shapes is enough. Um, then on the la left, we have the data browser. Um, so it's really all kind of uh, data. It could be any any type of data. And for convenience, it's split in two, although they work the same way. But at the top, those are the elements of the designs, and the rest is all the data. So I have the, the circle and the, the rectangle here. Um, and this is uh, the input. So if when I want to change a value, uh, let's say the text here, um, I can uh, type here. Because usually uh, there are long URL or formulas and similar to a, a spreadsheet at the top, it's easier to, to manipulate. Although the UX or the URL, I'm not sure yet. Um, so, so far it works like uh, maybe Figma or a normal design tool you would know, um, or you might know, but the, the specificity is um, the, um, 
the, in, the, the value, so it can be any uh, formula. So I can say hello uh, world. And uh, I have, yeah, my text uh, here. So there are um, a limited set of uh, formulas right now that uh, or function that it uh, supported. I just handpicked some and created some. Um, but also we can reference other values uh, by using a pass. So the time here, for example, I could reference that oops, with the pass directly in the vector. So time that seconds and um, I would get the the seconds here and it's updating. Um, I could also, to go faster, I could uh, click the text here to link, and then I, I link to the minutes, for example. And it does the same, but it's uh, a little bit faster because that's something we do a lot. Um, so at a high level, the, easy west, the easiest way to think about it, in my opinion, is this, although it doesn't look like a spreadsheet, it is like a spreadsheet with two key differences. One, that they we have names um, instead of just coordinates and a 2D two-dimension uh, table. So things have names, which have some trade-offs. Uh, sometimes it's better, sometimes not. And it's uh, nested, uh, infinitely nested, like a JSON data structure or a map enclosure. Again, it has some uh, trade-offs. Um, it's not as, as easy to enter uh, new data as in a spreadsheet, you have to come up with a name. But uh, for this particular use case, we'll see why I think it's uh, quite nice. Um, let me, I might not still. Um, so here I will again connect with the time. Uh, so the text will connect with the seconds. And uh, yeah, something else I want to show is when I uh, update the, or when I use direct manipulation. So the prototype really has to focus data and direct manipulation and all the two interact together. So for example, if I do um, a line from this rectangle to this circle, what I just did is created um, a, new, a new line, but the X, Y, the X1, sorry, the one point, of the line is the center of the rectangle. The Y1 is the center, uh, vertical center of the rectangle and so on. So just by directly manipulating things on the canvas, I actually create uh, those formulas, um, which has very uh, interesting properties. Uh, so for example, let's say if that I want to do a, a clock uh, first thing that could be interesting also is to, I can connect the height with the width this way. So I make sure this is a circle and uh, know when I change, uh, right. So I can create, create some constraints uh, this way. Although try to avoid saying constraints because I don't know, just the connotation is a bit <laughs> negative or too complex. Uh, so let's let's try to do a, a clock. So I can uh, make a line like this. And if we look at the property, we have a rotation, which is uh, the angle uh, right now between the, the two points, but I can update that. So if I do zero, it's uh, horizontal, but I can connect it to the, um, the time again, so the seconds. Uh, so this will move this way. Uh, I need to multiply by six, so I get the correct uh offset every time and then i subtract 90 because of the initial rotation um is it correct no yeah i get that wrong in a way <laughs> uh yeah better If, if you have a clock that runs like that, maybe there is something wrong. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, what did it do wrong? Um, 
And you can see maybe one of the issue with uh, yeah, better with uh, the parenthesis. That's something I would uh, need to to improve because it's it's not so easy to update the code. I got it wrong a few times, but now it's uh, correct. I'm in a normal universe again. Um, so that's really the the basics. And my hypothesis is that just with that, like a slightly improved or different spreadsheet connected to a canvas, we can actually do a lot and do a lot of what I would consider is uh, programming. Uh, as a front-end developer, that's mostly what I do all day long, uh, getting the data in and then translating that to uh, visuals. So the, the data is very important. And um, I think in a, in a closure meetup or group, um, it can be nice to, to talk about that. Um, because when I presented that in a, in a London meetup a few weeks ago, I had a lot of, um, I forgot that doing something in Clojure was uh, maybe not, not expected because I've been in a Clojure bubble and had pitched for so long that I didn't expect to have so many questions of why are you using Clojure? Because it was like the future of programming uh, meetup in London. So people were mostly using JavaScript, I think. Um, and it made me think, because initially I said, yeah, just because that's the programming language I know, but I don't think it giving, it's giving me an edge for this particular uh, prototype. I could have done it with JavaScript. Um, but it got me thinking more also because I've seen other tools similar to this one, and they were all made with a dialect of Lisp or uh, some existing one or some made up one. So I thought they were a common, a common point. And I think that's probably data, right? We say like closure is a data first language or we like to manipulate the data and now that i think about it i think this is um the applying the same principles um about data to a, a ui or a product so the, the first thing is that um the data is uh, always uh, visible we don't necessarily need um an abstraction, it can even hurt to have a different abstraction and try to have the data behind uh, different panels or different type or different different settings. All the data here uh, is exposed and it has some trade-offs, but we can try to see um, what it's good at. So let's try not to bury the da data and uh, similar to spreadsheet, like everything is visible. So you already know, you always know how the system works because everything is there, there is nothing hidden. Um, and then, um, but, uh, did I, and from that, there are quite a few benefits. So it composes well. So for example, I can create a new uh, variable here. And if I connect that to the time, for example, um, because time points to another map, it can just expand uh, this way and it compose nicely and we'll see uh, how. And another benefit is that I think I really like from Clojure script and I think that's what sold me when I discovered it or Clojure in general. Like if you want to talk to an API and you're getting JSON back, uh, I was coming from Scala and I was learning Haskell at that point and you would have to do some crazy in my opinion sometimes mapping or like you not know, the exact shapes of all the json to get the correct mapping where in closure you just do js to clg like i think that's what you get when you have a data oriented program it's very easy to talk uh, to other uh, endpoint that just return data so it's very good for inter interoperability and it's similar here so for example i have the this weather api um so it's just a normal call and returning just json i'm not processing it at all and i can create a weather uh, variable there is an api function that will do that for me um, and again because this uh, resolve into more data i can just uh, inline it and now use this data as part of uh, my drawing so if I remove that, for example, the example I like to do is um, I, I won't do the the full weather widget, the, the one I also I published, 
um, but I'll just show the, the basics. So for example, if we look at currents, uh, weather, now I'll start here. So uh, for, in, in the API, they show how to um, show uh, the pictogram for the current uh, weather. So uh, I'll just <clears throat> sorry, show that to see how it works. So now I have the URL. Uh, I can have that here. And here, if we do, if we change this code, we change the, the weather, right? So let's do a formula, which would be a string concatenation. And I split here. And instead of uh, uh, 11D, I want, so I can, uh, let me make that smaller. I can navigate the data and now I know it, but the, if I go to current, weather, weather, zero. And this shape is strange. That's why I'm also trying to really not making any data processing, should be able to handle any kind of data. And then this icon, if I do command click, it enters the correct location. And um, now it's uh, updated with the current um, weather in France. Um, let's remove the border like that. And now let's quickly add the actual temperature. So because it's so common to want to show the text um, of some properties, I can click here directly, link, and then start drawing a rectangle, uh, which then would be the, the value, um, font size 20. And let's say the text, I don't want the, I don't need this precision, and uh, I can move that. And I have the, the temperature. And without thinking about it too much, I also have the, the beginning of, of a layout because those two are connected, but just because I started drawing from this one and they are connected in a way that we've seen before, like the, the left of this block is connected to the right of this one because I start, started drawing from this point. So I use some elements of the, the design to help me create those relationships. Um, and, um, one was an important part is the, what I call the collections. So in, in some of the demo, I, <clears throat> I made this one, but I think uh, this one is also interesting. It shows the, the pre precipitation, um, and we can do that quickly. So we have the data, um, so, sorry, let's check again. So here, what we have is, um, the hourly uh, precipitations. Uh, here we have a label every three hours, I think it was, and then one uh, rectangle for every hour, one data point. Uh, but I don't have that here because I excluded that. But a percentage, yes, okay. So now I have hourly, and this is a, a list and um, if I just want to connect to one precise, like the first one, I would go to zero and then start connecting things from there. But if I want to do things that repeat, I use the index because uh, which you would then why, um, but then the formula will use the index. So let's do, for example, humidity. Uh, and I can start to draw from there. Uh, and then I get, uh, let's do like that. So by default, it repeats as, many value that there are, I'll do smaller. Otherwise it's gonna start getting slow, uh, unfortunately. Um, so now I'm connected to all the early humidity. It's not exactly precipitations, but <laughs> precipitation is zero always somehow here. Um, and what I actually want to do is to connect the, the height, right? With the, um, the humidity like that. So. Uh, now I have this value. Let's uh, move that to the top a bit. Um, so, and to make it smaller, I can, if I make one smaller, like it's, um, it will scale all of them. Let's move that down. Uh, 
So if I change the, the first one, I can draw it like I change the base and everything move. But if I change uh, this one, for example, I can control the, the spacing and uh, yeah, the, the, the size. Hopefully I didn't, maybe I did. Crash it, let's see. Uh, but now it's in the in the wrong uh, direction. I can click here, and unfortunately, I change something, and then I get <laughs> not a number. Uh, but since the data is always there, and sometimes I get it wrong, I can always change that. And I don't want the center X. That's the issue. Shouldn't change. I want the left to be let's say. So now it's back here. So ideally, uh, did I? Yeah, I think, let me start again. So again, humidity, let's draw like that. Uh, 24, connect the height, humidity. Um, let's make it smaller. Yeah, and she I'll do it uh, in the code directly. So right now, if we look at the, the coordinates, the top, what is it? The top is fixed, right? And the bottom is uh, just the top plus the, the height. And I actually want to have the bottom uh, fixed. So I can do uh, 20 more. Ideally, if it was working, I would just directly manipulate, but uh, no, I inverted, so it's, it's in the correct uh, direction. Let's make that smaller. Background color, color. change this one. The string, um, like that. We can now remove the text here. Um, and the last part was, um, yeah, what I find interesting as well is here in an, in another tool or maybe HTML or CSS, you would have to, to make the border and um, think about that. But I don't think if that, I think a border maybe is a concept from, from developers or people used to CSS. Well, you could think as well as actually, I just want to create a line from here to here and it's repeated over all the, the occurrences and then I make it blue and I get something similar. Let's, we want to have a very close. Now you can see how it's slow because it's calculating all the dependencies while dragging. There is no caching, so it has to uh, calculate everything. And that I work it again, not a number, let's see. Uh, like that. And the last thing we can do for this demo is uh, adding the, the number again, but let's say below as a text, uh, like here, like that. And we can see that the, the text that I didn't show, that's why we need the index. So it's the weather only index, like a, a closure pass. And then I get the correct value. And if I, for example, want to show once every three hour, um, I can do that. And then the center of the text is connected to the center of the rectangle, but I can also multiply the index by three. So I uh, have every three uh, hour, like it was uh, here. Yeah, I mean, it was this one. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to show mostly about yeah what happens or what I want to, to see what happened when we expose the data, we just have a small formula. And very importantly, that's the difference between the two live scene and Brett Victor uh, presentations, really connecting to actual API and be able to, to handle JSON to or any, any other things. So I can also, for example, connect to um, chat GPT or open AI and ask for data and have to have it written in JSON or could be even EDN and work from there. So like once you, you can work with JSON, probably you can work with any kind of data. 
which I think could be better than a, a normal spreadsheet. Um, yeah, that's it for me. I, I think that was that was quite amazing. Uh, <laughs> according to my my schedule, we have eight minutes for for questions. If we're sticking to uh, to half an hour, I, I'm just going to go ahead and and, and ask one. Uh, how do you handle uh, cyclic dependencies? What, what happens if I make two things that depend on each other? Yeah, right now with the uh, trash, I mean, the, the library that I use would have an exception, circular dependency and blank page. <laughs> so yeah, probably want a better, not that, <laughs> like tell the user like in a spreadsheet, but yeah, uh, right now it would be an exception. So I know it, I try to avoid, but sometimes I create those myself by clicking on the right or wrong <laughs> dot. Yeah. Nice. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, just unmute your mic and ask if you have one. Yeah, so wonderful. Um, could you tell maybe a bit more about the data model behind the scenes about how things are represented. Yeah, so um, I have um, check. No, so it's using a uh, reagent uh, at the moment. So I have a big map, which is the entire state of the um, yeah, I can show that uh, the entire state of the um, the app, uh, which you can see. So it has all the data, but I also expose the um, data about the editor. So, for example, the the mouse position, everything. So right now it's uh, helping me debug things, uh, but I think it can be further. Um, uh, it can be. Yeah, used in other things. So, for example, the the dot that I used when drawing something for consistent spacing. Um, let's do that. When I want to add something, I have this spacing because usually you want to to connect things like that. This is using this variable. So, if I want to change the spacing, you can create a a design system this way. For example, uh, so this will update the spacing, and now I will have um, consistent spacing, and you could have a uh, colors or yeah. So th that there is a, this big map of data, which is both the data from the user, the data from API, the data from, in this case, the editor. Uh, what I use, uh, then I use one library. I don't remember the name to get. Um, a topo topological sort, uh, sort of all the, the dependencies uh, between the, um, yeah, the, the values. Um, so what is important as well is that the dependencies are at a value level, not as an um, entity or uh, so it's more fine uh, gray uh, and have less uh, circular dependencies with. And once we have the, the topological sort you can yeah uh, resolve all the the values one by one this way and, uh, and get the final thing that I draw uh, and because it's a reagent atom as soon as I update it it's updated. I can also save it, which I do uh, locally on local storage, just uh, EDN do a read string and that's it, that's back. <laughs> And then the last point, maybe for the, the formulas, uh, there is no, um, that's the, the part that I have the least experience with. So I'm, I'm not sure, I uh, can probably do other things, but right now it's just uh, passing the EDN just read, read string. Uh, and then I get a vector for the formulas and then I pass the vector. And then when I find a, a symbol, that I that I know, I call the function. I have a mapping from a symbol to a function, and then those resolves uh, like that. So I don't have any eval or interpreter. Just a small thing <laughs> to start with. Yeah. Nice. Are there uh, any more questions? 
Is this um, currently like available on GitHub? Is this something I can run locally? Uh, no, just only on my uh, machine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is very cool. I am very impressed. <laughs> this is something I would want to play with for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, if you have use cases, I would also be curious because right now I consider it as a technology, like because of what I've been doing at Pitch and what I was doing before, I found a gap or a technology gap before finding a use case for myself. I have kind of a niche use case, uh, but yeah, if in some kind of data visualization, data trying to get in contact with some data visualization, data designer, or even information designer. Sometimes it's even closer to what I need to see uh, if something like that exists or would help. But yeah, so anything in that area would be welcome. OK, are there uh, more questions? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so if it makes sense, uh, could we imagine the workflow of somebody using this tool? So at this stage of design, they can play and connect things and make it run mm -hmm. and, and play. And then at some point, they save it, as you explained, right? At some data format that is runnable in a way, right? Yeah. And then what happens? Uh, in, you know, what would you imagine could be the workflow to deploy it possibly? Yeah, so the, um, if I was to to publish it, uh, well, to publish it uh, somewhere right now with what I, I would, um, I think it would be hosted and then uh, what you, the output that you have at the end can be directly published in a in a URL and then that's what you would send to people and then trying to also keep the you can hide the data panel uh, if you just want to to ship uh, something I think it could even be used to do some kind of uh, website with very light layouting wouldn't be responsive but it can go in that direction as well uh, small website for example um, but yeah or a small something that you can embed in a in a blog or something like that. You would just get the URL from this hosted and then display it uh, in place. And yeah, I imagine it would be interesting to try to keep the the data a bit like we used to be able to do with the view source in the in the web, right? And get and see how things are made. Try to to keep that, not hide it. So every time you, you see something like that, you can understand how it's made and use it for yourself. But yeah. OK, uh, nice. Uh, we're actually at exactly uh, uh, half an hour. Uh, so uh, uh, I unfortunately have to leave a bit early because I missed the uh, I made a mistake uh, on the on the time when this started. So uh, Daniel will will take over as a facilitator in the, uh, the middle of Kira's presentation. Um, so Kira, uh, would you like to present the your your work on the closure data cookbook? Sure. Yeah. Thanks so much. Um... Yeah, so there's not like a ton of stuff to present, but I am curious. I'll show what basically what's what's there so far. But I'm I'm mostly curious to like just kind of get like feedback from people in the community. Um, a couple of like big things, um, or like whatever high level things I'm like thinking about these days are like first of all how to like publish the book and how to kind of distribute it. Um, which I think Daniel's work around like all the Quarto stuff is like really interesting and exciting. Um, and then I'm also. I don't know, I've, I'm going back and forth a lot on like the sort of organization of the chapters, like, cause like it's a classic thing where like you you write something or make something and then compare it to other similar things. And you're like, mine is different, it's worse. Um, but anyway, so, okay, I'll share my screen. Um, first I'll pull it up somewhere. So, so far I've just been playing with um, clerks like capability, excuse me, capabilities. So this is um, 
like a sample of this is what's kind of on the main branch so far. Um, and obviously, eventually, the idea is to get, oh, I don't have it up. Maybe I don't, so many things open. Anyway, um, eventually, obviously, this will be like a nicer like landing page or whatever. But right now, basically, Clerk does have like a, a not half bad way to publish like multiple um multiple chapters of like one document so so these are the namespaces basically excuse me oh the headings and this one are broken so there's no uh like table of contents but there's obviously like stuff missing so like if you compare this to um like for example this style book so this this is the r for data science book which is generated with cordo uh, which I, I really like and there's just like a lot of little things that make it really nice for navigating a lot of content so like there's these page turn things for example which is like a small thing but it's like non-trivial to hack this in after the fact there is um this like little internal table of contents here on the side which i really like um, and it kind of like updates itself as you scroll. And then there's really good search capability. So if you search for like a bar chart or whatever, it'll, oops, it'll bring up these like relevant and useful um, results. And so this is obviously like much more pleasant to navigate like as a user compared to this, this is pretty good. And this is a start, um, but you know, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of work to do. So anyway, I guess, yeah, in terms of the like high level and, and that's the other thing, these right now, the namespaces basically are not linked. So the, the way to link, um, the way to sort of navigate is to go back to the index, scroll to the top, go back to the index and then click on the next one that you want to look at. So anyway, there's that. So one thing, I guess, like, I don't know. I guess I'm curious. I'm curious, first of all, like if there's like, I find, I find clerk really, really cool, but it's, I find it complex a lot of things. Like there's, there's obviously the really nice, like notebook, like auto updating, like caching mechanism or whatever that they've implemented, which is like a really cool piece of software, excuse me, that gives you this like illusion of like, rerunning the entire namespace from top to bottom every time you change anything so it's it's really nice because like your code always executes in the right order like everything always runs as expected in the right order i mean assuming the the caching works like except for the times where the caching breaks down but then you can just blow it away and restart um but there's that so there's like the caching stuff and the namespace rendering stuff but then there's this whole other world of like i mean there's a whole separate concern about like interactive stuff which i guess i haven't even touched on but then there's also like this publishing stuff so like publishing these artifacts and i don't know i'm torn because like i like i like it but i also i don't like how it's like all all kind of in one if you know what i mean so anyway like like it's crossed my mind to for example like like contribute stuff to clerk to like make this kind of ui like this is obviously possible to have this kind of like master table of contents here. And then basically in clerk, like these, um, these little side table of contents are what this is. So this is what's over here. And then this one, this one on the left is like the, the index. What, what is this? So this is really this. And then the search is, is cool too. So anyway, so yeah, so that's that sort of stuff I'm thinking about in terms of like how to actually like disseminate the content because it's at a point now so this is not everything is is pushed to the main branch but so far there's a bunch of stuff written now for basically getting data like in and out of notebooks and like tidying it up a little bit um so for example like databases random sequences um there's a little bit of text to fill in here maybe explaining things a little bit better, but I am trying to keep it like fairly concise and focus more on the code um, as opposed to like really verbose, like like, a, a, like the goal is not to be like a really verbose collection of kind of blog posts or like tutorials. The goal is to be more of like a, 
like a reference guide kind of thing for people. Like if you already kind of know what you're looking for and you just want to know like the syntax, the idea is you can go be like, how do I get data from like a, like a database into my notebook? And then it'll just be like this really short kind of collection of examples or whatever. Um, so that's the idea. So these are the ones that are, oops, I keep see, I keep expecting that to go back are ready. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so that's that. This one needs better headings, but this is a basically the chapter about kind of tidying up um, misformatted data or sparse data or whatever, um, that kind of thing. And then this is for getting data out. So there's other things like probably I'll hide these blocks. Like this is not useful in a in a notebook artifact. And this is the other thing, you know, when you're public, like to, to write, I'm torn because in like a final, in the final product, I'm not sure if you necessarily want to see like every single form and executed like result, excuse me, like these, like this adds nothing to the, the story. This adds nothing. Um, anyway. So, so that's, that's basically where it's at. So I'm curious if anyone has ideas about like publishing like multi, multiple pages of documents as one resource is one kind of topic. And then the other topic uh, uh, that I'm like waffling about a lot in my mind is, is how the stuff is laid out. So like, you'll see, so this is, this is just one similar kind of book that I've been like using as a reference, the data, the, the content here is sorted a little bit differently. So there's basically like an initial section where he goes like top to bottom through the full stack. So like just jumping right in, like right off the bat to data viz and then, and then talking about some of the other stuff like transformation basics, <laughs> excuse me. Um, but yeah, like, I, I find it a little counterintuitive because like, obviously you can't like visualize your data until you like import it and clean it up and, and transform it. And so the way I had laid out the content so far is this is a bad example because it's not all here, but like it goes basically like there's a little intro and then loading data and like getting data just in and out of, of a closure notebook or namespace. And then cleaning it up, tidying it, kind of like, yeah, like manipulating the data and then data viz and the data viz chapter, I don't think will be done for a long time. There's like a million questions about how to do that best. But um, yeah, anyway, I'm just curious, like if you were, if you were the kind of person who would use a resource like this, like what, like what would be useful? Cause I can see where he's coming from like this is probably like basically data viz is really interesting and fun. And so it's like, if you want to get people into something, it's like, you just dive right in and start making graphs. Um, and so it's, it's like useful to have that like upfront, um, but it assumes a lot of stuff. Like you need, you need like a loaded, cleaned up, like tidy data set before you can even think about visualizing it. So anyway, I think that's that's mostly what I wanted to say. There's not a whole lot more than that, um, other than, yeah, I guess like a brief status update about just kind of how it's going, which is slowly. Um, but um, yeah, just kind of curious. I don't know, like I, I would like for this to be a resource like kind of by and for the community. And so if there's like input or whatever, like I'm happy to happy to hear it, especially on these on these particular topics but in general i'm always open to any any other thoughts too so yeah what do you guys think can i go first since i have to leave of course yeah Yay. uh yeah so i i don't have any thoughts about outline and structure i think i'll have to try to read the r book and read your stuff before i have an opinion on that yeah uh on on Clerk specifically, uh, your experience matches mine. It's great for single documents and for multiple documents. Uh, I, I've considered trying to make my whole website with Clerk, but uh, the linking part is just uh, iffy. So I kind of like having control of that for myself. Uh, and my idea 
uh, over the long term for trying to make or publish my own Clerk documents is to be able to just use Clerk to create the single document, uh, either just as data or an HTML, an HTML file, and then being able to do the rest myself and, and have control over that. Uh, I think it's possible to get uh, Pandoc JSON out in the middle uh, from the Clerk. Oh, thing. interesting. Yeah, rather than uh yeah buying the whole cake and the presentation and the delivery and everything yeah that's the thing i find it's like you said it's a lot of a lot of concerns like all kind of mingled like mixed up in like one library and so that's really interesting i hadn't thought about using pandoc because like one option is of course to like because this is obviously just a list of html pages so you can take these pages and like collect them with like just like a babashka script and like make your own thing and that's one option but then it's just kind of like excuse me if we're going to do that if like if 10 different people are doing that maybe it would make sense to have some sort of like library or thing like I think I think basically there's a lot of people who would like to publish like kind of this this style of thing like a book with pagination and like tables of contents and master tables of contents and search there's a lot of types of content that fit this kind of like desired like artifact uh and anyway so i'm just curious how other people are doing it so that's interesting i hadn't even thought about pandoc but that obviously would be a good one that's what corda uses if i'm if i'm not mistaken i think it also it would be interesting to invite martin and uh and jack and yeah. kind of just ask them this this question because uh i've i've heard them kind of say that this is just data all the way but then i'm looking into it myself and i kind of don't understand the data format so I just, and you're like this is a little bit it's a little bit more than data yeah 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 it's it's a lot right it's it's a big plug but, of data and what do all the pieces mean but that's interesting you're right like if you because you could you could presumably maybe you could feed the html documents into into pandoc it's interesting. Uh, anyway, yeah, it, it might even be possible to do do something less. Uh, I, I think they have their own uh, markdown, or sorry, uh, yeah, markdown parser uh, with mm. with outputs. Uh, but there's been some uh, thought about uh, making a babushka pod for uh, Pandoc in order to be able to just use that as a dependency. And that would be so cool. Some some other stuff. I think they've made, uh, made this essay about Clerk and they've built mm. HTML and a PDF from that. And in order to make the PDF, I presume they haven't kind of just started with the HTML. I, I, I'm guessing they right. did something else. That's really interesting. Yeah, I guess that's the thing because that's definitely like the end game I'm interested in is also publishing like some sort of like PDF or EPUB or something like that. Um, like some sort of format that would be like easier to read on like, like a mobile device than like just a website. So mm, that's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure like Martin has a lot of ideas about this. It's probably a really common thing. So it makes sense to talk to him about it, but anyway, that's cool. Thanks for your, yeah. Thanks for your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited about this. So uh, I, I have to leave. <laughs> uh, this was super exciting. So I hope to. Yeah. Have a good night. See you all later. Bye. And thanks for coming. Yeah. I'll see you later. Bye. Yeah, um, so wonderful to have Theodore again. And yeah. yeah, so I'll kind of replace Theodore in moderating for a moment. Um, yeah, uh, any other questions to Kira? Or any other comments by Kira? So if I may sort of jump in from the standpoint of more beginner, or again, thinking of different target audiences, I think. Mm. So. Um, I totally agree that for people who know what's going on, all of that extra stuff with namespaces and nails is completely useless. But for beginners, I think the ability to have the entire code base and see the entire code base is important. Mm. Mm. And I'm wondering if that could be some sort of toggle feature where you show this oh, that and that um or some way of sort of getting the entire code base because i know that students often google for something and they would you know see 
some fragments. And actually, that was my experience with R often, uh, where I'm reading something and it assumes a gazillion of different things before right. you get to the thing that you need. And I don't know, maybe some ability to like download the code that gets you to this point or something. Oh, that's, that's a cool idea. Like, like a little button here to be like, load this. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't what know I... what the modularity of that is going to be. Like, what are the modules? What are we, you know? Um... I would love, I don't know if it's possible. It might be possible to do something with like Psy or Ski or however they pronounce it. Like, I think it would be super cool to be, to have like, to, yeah, be able, you know how you see those like little code pens and stuff, or like, if you see a JavaScript snippet on the internet, you can click, like, try this out. Mm -hmm. That would be super cool to have a little button, you know, to be like, try this out. And then you, it would like open like a little, like an in browser, like REPL that you could like, you could like play around with. <sighs> that would be so cool. That's right. a great idea. Yeah, but also like the ability to sort of, you know, if we're in chapter three and the data has been cleaned up already. Right. Can we just kind of download that stuff and run it and then sort of see what what's involved mm -hmm. in it? You know. So again, I don't know. It's I think primarily people who would be interested in this sort of thing would be beginners but they often mm -hmm. get frustrated because you know looking yeah. at a specific chunk and having something different that brought them there or to that point and having something that doesn't match the format <laughs> right becomes a problem yeah yeah interesting that's cool that's useful it's a cool idea okay yeah that's, I'll keep that in mind. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to throw another, because for, for Pitch also, we wanted to have, um, we have issues finding what we want to to centralize our documentation. Uh, yeah, it's a hard problem. Clink, Clink uh, Clerk, I never tried uh, yet. Uh, it's not there yet for some of the reason you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, during during my research, like the just maybe as inspiration, the it's called Docusaurus, I think, mm. That's the most flexible, maybe modern that I found. Um, not sure if it's possible to to plug it. Uh, no idea, but um, I think yeah. And they have the the same uh, UI as you mentioned, like the search on the left uh, and high level and then on the mm. right the, uh, and the search so it, it's quite common and they are the yeah. only that's their job <laughs> making a documentation out of like that looks like it out of your for HTML. sure yeah. i have played around with docusource a little bit for like some work projects i do think it's it's pretty ideal for like if you just have straight documentation yeah yeah that's i think it's a great solution for sure yeah, interesting. Interesting. How easy is it currently to like clone your repo or whatever and like get it running locally? It should be pretty straightforward. So yeah, the goal is definitely for that to be like possible. So there's a like the, it's just all of the the whole project right now is just a collection of namespaces. So it's here in the site closure organization. Um, I should probably like write a little bit more there, but there's, um, I guess this, anyway. Yeah, these are just like, these are just closure files. And so you should in theory be able to just like clone it and run it. And the, the idea is like all the data will be like in the repo also. Um, so it should be like self-contained. There's a couple external things that, that could possibly break down. Like we're using like DBpedia for some of the examples for the Sparkle stuff, but like, um, yeah, it's, it's the goal is for that to be, to remain possible. And I would love to add, that's another like longstanding issue on the back of my mind. There's just no time. It's not enough hours in the day, but 
to like, I want to like add some like tests, at least like some, some sort of basic tests around this stuff so that like, just to check that it's working. Cause like the goal is for this to be like useful for more than just the first six months after it's released. Like as libraries get updated and change and, and the ecosystem evolves, I would like to keep this up to date and just be able to like update the dependencies, update the examples, and then have like a test suite to just double check that they're still working. And then the idea is like, if the test pass and the book renders, then it's it's correct. Like, because it's it's just closure code, it's namespaces. So it's not like, that's that's one, the one thing, maybe not the one thing, but one of the main things keeping me from switching away from clear completely is because like, I, I like that it's just closure namespaces because the problem is like, if I switch to just like plain markdown files, they'll, they'll, they'll get stale. So it's like the examples won't run and at a certain point, and then you'll be like copy pasting snippets from like markdown files to a REPL to make sure they work. And so it's really cool to have the code, the, the content just be a closure namespace. Cause I can like, you can execute this in a REPL and then, you know, if it runs, then the book is correct because like it works. And so that I think is really cool, but, but yeah, Jeremy, I'm running into a lot of the same like problems that you would run into with like a documentation website where it's just like the the artifact that it produces the website that it produces is not super polished but um anyway i'm really excited to hear from daniel because i know like you've done a lot of work on this like exact thing so yeah maybe if i mean i'm certainly happy to talk about this forever but i also don't want to take any more time away from you Thank you so much for this. Yeah, and maybe maybe in a moment I'll present a little update which is very much related and very mm -hmm. much um, kind of driven by uh, the advice and comments of Kira in the last few weeks. And But uh, Kira, do you have any other comments or any other questions to Kira before we move to the next topic? Yeah, yeah no, so, I think that's all. Yeah, so maybe I'll ask you one last question, and that is yeah. how you see the contribution process. Uh, oh, yeah. Of, at least the vision of what you would like to see happening in the long term, or how this... Yeah. Would, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, so definitely. I'm, I'm happy for, like, to, to collaborate with anyone who wants to work on this. So, like, I think I should add, I should, like, probably add a contributing guide or something to the thing, but... Yeah, I think there's there there's like a range of like a spectrum of like ways to contribute. So like the thing is like like most people just don't have time to like write a chapter or like write a section. Um and I think that's one one of the things that we were talking about solving with like this other like little scrapbook project. Um but certainly like if there's anyone who's interested in like taking on a whole topic being like I love like bar charts and I would love to just write the chapter about bar charts like just like, that would be wonderful. I'd be happy to chat and just like help someone get set up with that. The thing is, yeah, that's, it's like a big commitment, but, but there's anyway, there's, there's, that's like the far end of like, um, like the sort of extreme end, but there like, there's that from everything all the way back to just like reading through like one namespace and pointing out like typos and mistakes and stuff like that. That's another really helpful thing or sort of like kind of being like a, like an editor almost. Um, and, and just like leaving little comments. You can like leave comments, you can make pull requests against the repo. Probably the best thing is to just like ping me like, and we can talk about what, like whatever you wanna do, if there's something in particular you like, or if there's something in particular you wanna learn. Like I'm talking with one one woman right now who's like like interested in learning, you know, um, a certain do how to do certain things with closure and data. So it's like, we can kind of work together. It's like, I can help you learn it. And then if you like document what you're learning as you go, like we can use that in the cookbook. So it's like really helpful that way. Um, so yeah, I think like if, I guess for now, it's, it's mostly just like, if you're interested in this, like, let me know and we'll find something, we'll find a way to get those contributions in. Um, or just like, like a couple of people have made like small pull requests just with like little, like small corrections and stuff like that. That's always welcome too. Um, and yeah, the goal is like, I've, I'll try, I'll make for now. I'm really, I'm just like really hung up on the whole like publishing process. I think for now, I'm just going to try to make like a slightly nicer landing page and I'll put that on the internet as like a work in progress as I keep, um, like 
you know, adding new chapters and whatever. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's going so much slower than I wanted to, but that's, I'm realizing like evenings and weekends is just like, it, it doesn't, it's not, a, it's not enough time to do a project like this, but it'll, it'll, it's slowly, slowly coming together. So it's, and it's really fun. It's been a really fun experience. So, um, yeah, but anyway, so that's, that's where that's at. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, so I now want uh, like a brief update about a few related projects. And we have like 15 minutes till the official end. And then some people may wish to stay longer and chat. And some may need to say goodbye. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll show the screen. And, um, and yeah, and this part will be really very much a continuation of what Kira was telling about. I think you can see my screen now. And uh, yeah, so so um, first, maybe the, the context is that this is something we have tried in the past and we've had actually failed in creating a book writing process a few times. And the point was that, uh, one of the things needed was this kind of editorial uh, attention. Somebody who is continually thinking about what the book needs and, and kind of making it tidy. And, and then that is why it's so exciting to hear Kira telling this story, which is evolving continually and in actually thinking about these dilemmas of, of layout and all usability questions. And so that is one thing. And other the other aspect was like easy contribution, right? Making it very, very straightforward to contribute to a book. And then how could we have these both, both these things? And what we know is that we did try and we failed to keep it going in a way that kind of adapts to the changes in the ecosystem, to the changes in tools, and all, that, all other things. And, you know, people had to, to uh, uh, leave for a while and it just didn't, haven't been working for us. And, and so the current idea that we've been discussing recently is that, yeah, there is the closure data cookbook that Kira is creating and facilitating. And maybe there is another piece of the story alongside it. And uh, in a great conversation with Kira and with Blaine Moose. Uh, there was an idea and Blaine named it Closure Data Scrapbook. So now, scrapbook, right? So now we have two things and some content will move between them. So the first one is the one Kira was telling about and you see it is so carefully uh, crafted and, and it will be like that. It's the, the tidy thing that is evolving as the, as the nice book. Uh, and the other thing is uh, more wide and, and more maybe open to contributions and is never so tidy as the cookbook. And we may need both. And so now I'll, I'll kind of describe our efforts in creating a very basic structure for the scrapbook that will encourage contributions and gradually allow content to flow to the cookbook, hopefully. And I'll just describe a few of the tools we're using for that. And um, is it making sense so far? Any, any comments about it? About this duality between two projects and the flow between them, right? And yeah, and everything I'm talking about is very much kind of driven by the guidance of Kira in the last few weeks. And, and, and I'm happy to have this conversation that allows to kind of gradually create it. And so the idea of the structure of this scrapbook is that it will be one repo that is very much welcoming uh, pull requests and is so open that it, it is almost immediate to add something to it. And it is built from many closure projects because, you know, teaching a certain technique or a certain library or topic may need 
a separate project for it, for the dependencies of setup and so on. So it will have many projects inside, and it will also have a book, which is the rendering of these projects. Again, by this uh, approach that Kira presented of the namespace as a notebook. So ideally, every namespace of code will be a, a page in the book, in the resulting book. Right? And then the projects uh, will have one main project, which is the easiest to contribute to, because it has some default dependencies, which are OK for most common data science tasks. But it, have, it will have other projects. For, so for example, this HDF project will be about handling this data format called HDF that some people care about. So it may need additional dependencies, which are not in the main project. So it is just a separate tiny project. And there will be a template for creating those tiny projects. So uh, maybe let us look into one of the namespaces in the main project, the namespace about data visualization. So you see, it is a closure namespace. It is the source for a notebook. And we see a few things going on here. One of them is that some values have this annotation of kind. So this annotation of kind is part of this kindly library. And the idea of kindly is to state about certain values that they should be rendered in a certain way. So for example, this thing is of the beta light specification. So it should be rendered this way. And the idea is that we, may, we need a convention that different tools will know how to treat. So we are writing adapters to the famous tools such as Portal, Clerk, and so on. And so, for example, this value can be, uh, or maybe this value is an easier way to write it using uh, like a, an additional library that is kind of gluing things together more nicely. So this thing can be rendered using different tools. So now I will render it using a tool called clay. So I have some Emacs key binding, and we also have, uh, you know, in VS Code, we have some key bindings to use it. So I now, uh, you know, send this form to be visualized. And we get it visualized as this plot of this Vega light specification. But I could also send it to be visualized in Portal. So now I send it to Portal, this amazing uh, tool for data navigation, and, and it handles it well. But there are some layout problems to be uh, to be improved in the adapter to Portal. But the idea is that using this kindly annotation, we can have different tools respect the notion that something should be rendered in a certain way. So we we saw um, that. Clay, this tiny simple tool for data visualization, is accepting it. And we saw Portal accepting a, a kindly value. And we can also render the whole notebook using Clay. So it is just a different key binding. And so we get the whole notebook rendered. Right? And we can also render the whole notebook in Clerk, this other amazing, tool, uh, amazing notebook tool. So I have another key binding, and I have this clerk notebook that is updated by another key binding, right? So different tools are hopefully in harmony, at least in common use cases of common things, like a Vega light plot. And so we saw a clay, a single value, or whole notebook. And we saw portal, and we saw clerk, different tools. And now another thing is Quoto. Quoto is a, a publishing tool that Kira mentioned is also supported now as a way to render notebooks written in the kindly convention. And really, thank you, Kira, for you know proposing that as a way to go because I think to me it is really working nicely when I need to write a presentation or. Oh, something that looks like a book. So now with another key binding that should work in Emacs and VS Code and so on, 
I'm rendering it as Quoto. It is a bit slower because it did need to run it from scratch and Quoto has this uh, listening mode where it is updating for little changes, but this is not connected yet. So we, we had to run the whole Quoto, run the whole Quoto rendering, but we did get it nicely rendered with Quoto. Now you have the color themes and fonts and all the nice uh, tools that Quoto offers you. Uh, many features for making things uh, beautiful. And uh, so you see these are different ways to render. And the point is that more amazing tools will arise that will be hopefully great answers for the beginner friendly question. How somebody may just look into this code and just make it work on their side. So for me at the moment, the easiest way is maybe uh, one of the editors, Emacs or VS Code, and Clay, because you just press a key binding and you get it visualized. But there will be better tools, and one of the exciting ones, or maybe more beginner-friendly tools, is the Calva notebooks, uh, which is not supported yet in the current setup. But that, that's the idea, that we will create things in a compatible way, and that we will encourage contributions. And the only thing we'll ask is for people to try to use this kindly convention when they can, so that things will be friendly for future tools like Calva notebooks and for current tools like the other ones. And that's the idea of the scrapbook. And the idea is that hopefully after some things mature in the process of the scrapbook, they can hopefully move to the cookbook if the cookbook editor uh, accepts that uh, more carefully. Uh, if it makes sense. And maybe in a moment, Kira will have some comments about, about the, the vision of, of that side. So maybe we'll see just last one last thing, and that is the book part of the story. So, oh, sorry. Um, so now in the scrapbook, we have this book directory, and I'll now run a bash script I wrote, a tiny script that what it does is collecting all the quota documents that have been created by the user in the book. So I'll just run it and you'll see it's collecting those QMD files. QMD is the markdown-like format of, of Quoto. And, and now it is creating a book of all these quote or documents which have been created from closure namespaces. So we are connecting the namespace as a notebook approach to a whole quote or book that will be rendered in a moment. And at the moment, these are two separate processes. So you see, we did have one stage where we explored things dynamically in closure and render them page by page and then Afterwards, we can collect everything to, into one book. Ideally, these two things would be dynamically connected together. Quoto has very dynamic possibilities of kind of editing text while it is updating the view. And it is just at the moment not so much compatible with our other dynamics of uh, using namespaces as notebooks. There are some stupid concurrency problems that I couldn't figure out, but hopefully we will figure them out. But anyway, now we have a book and you see it has those different pages, which are different uh, chapters. And, and uh, it is now in this preview mode that takes some time to load, but these should be very fast to load because it will be, you know, just plain HTML, uh, you know, very much, um, search engine friendly and whatever you should expect from a decent book. And so all of that um, is behaving like a book and you can search. So now I can search for, I don't know, this HDF format and I get the pages uh, relevant so I can click and go. And so it, it have this behavior of the book. And at the moment, that's our hope to have this process where people will contribute namespaces and projects and we will collect them to this uh, chaotic book called Scrapbook, 
that will be a source of some content that would gradually move to the cookbook, hopefully. And so that's the situation at the moment. And, and there are some technical troubles and, and uh, many questions about these compatibility hopes, which are not solved yet because those amazing tools are not always compatible with each other. And yeah, so that's the situation. We are now around the official end of time. Some people may need to go. I see some people that did need to go. And maybe what we should do is have some short comments, questions by anybody who may need to leave soon, and then we end the official part and, and some of us may wish to continue further. Um, so if it makes sense, does anybody have any short comment or question to any to anybody, to Jeremy, to Kira, or to, to me, or any other ideas you wish to see happening in the future meetings, or anything you wish to comment about? So maybe I wish to Jeremy to ask Jeremy one more question. One more question. And that is, you know, uh, how could the community possibly help with your amazing project? What you may like to see happening in terms of community interest and you know uh, how what kind of, of uh, feedback or, or, or questions you would like to see uh, coming from people regarding your project? Um, or if it is at this stage where it makes sense, maybe hey. it's not this stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still very much uh, an exploration, so it's hard to say. I think the um, what I'm most looking forward is I think I've I've, I've been um, far enough, or what I wanted to achieve, what I had in mind, I could achieve it. Like verify that okay, you could really uh, visualize and create uh, yeah, information software. Like, uh, with uh, this system in a flexible way. So I think it's mostly again about the, the use cases where uh, if those kind of tools exist, like uh, uh, the, the simplest way, like spreadsheet plus visualization connected, what and a way to publish that easily on the web, what use cases does it solve? I'm, I'm still uh, not sure. Um, the the niche use case I was talking about because I was uh, I used to be a professional uh, video game player, a Counter Strike. So I spent a lot of time on, on Twitch, uh, and I developed a lot of tools for Twitch and streaming in general. And that's where that I know where it would be a use case already, because when you stream, usually uh, on a production or even on TV, you add some overlays on top. So th those are non-dynamic, just information on top of your uh, overlays of, of your stream. Uh, maybe the player that are playing the current game, if it's things like that. And this would work well for that. That's where I was coming from initially. But uh, that's one use case, but I think it could be more general. Uh, like how Brett Victor said, like really information software. Yeah, fantastic. And of course, Jeremy, you know, I think we all have this feeling that there is so much more to hear about it and, and to, to learn about your implementation, about, about the, the, the things that can be created. So of course, if one day you wish to present again, a short update or a big update or a whole yeah. meetup about about it then please use this space as much as you find it helpful because uh, people will be enjoying that again and um, yeah does anybody have any comment about anything before we say goodbye to the official part of the session mm. uh, i just have a, a question i i think it's for both kira and daniel um about the book publishing process, um, specifically, like it seems like you can have code that contains markdown, or you can have markdown that contains code. Um, 
and I'm a little bit confused, <laughs> like which is be better or like, have you tried both? It sounds like currently you're erring on the side of code that contains Markdown, but I'm not, I'm not sure I understood that correctly. So could you maybe just talk about that dialectic a little bit? That's really interesting. Yeah, I don't know, I didn't have any thoughts, Daniel. Like you can go ahead. I mean, I guess like basically, like you're right, there's basically like, when you think about it from a high level, there's those two ways you can think about it. So it's like, yeah, you can either have text that has code snippets in it, or you can have code that has like text snippets in it. And I think the trade-off is like the the, pro the common problem with the sort of notebook style with, with like a text document that has code snippets in it is that the code snippets go stale. Like you can, you can, they execute, you can get these like, um, you can get systems that can actually execute the code and and like produce little snippets of results, kind of like Jupyter Notebooks. But there's there's a really good paper. Uh, it's in the clerk documentation about, um, I'm just gonna bring it up, about like all the problems with notebooks, uh, which explains all of this like much better than I will. I'll share it in, um, oh, the link is broken. It's called, what's wrong with computational notebooks, paper, here. Um, so like, this is like, this is like a lot of the common complaints like summarized in a really elegant way. Um, and so like one of the, one of the answers to that like set of complaints or whatever is to like, do like basically invert it. Like you said, like, write Just write code and then like render the comments as text. And so that's kind of what clerk does. Um, but then like the flip side of that is that it's like, it's like annoying to write a book as comments in a closure file, obviously, like you don't want to write a lot of text that way, but there's, there's workarounds. Like you can write for the, the chunky text parts. You can write like markdown files and like slurp those into your namespace or something like that. Um, but the like, I think the advantages outweigh the downsides because the upside is that like it's just code, so like you can execute it. So if you if your if your book renders, then it, you know it's like up to date because you know it actually works. Like if the code, because the thing is like you could publish a, a collection of Markdown files with code snippets in them, and the code snippets may or may not work, and you don't really know unless you test them separately somehow. But like if you're if you're whole if all of your content is just like namespaces then if it renders then you know it it works and it's it opens up possibilities for like testing like i would like to like automate see you later jeremy thanks so much um to automate some of the testing for this kind of stuff so that with an eye to like the future so it's like if we can like have a test suite then you can like update dependencies and then if the test pass then you can like have some confidence that your book is still like giving accurate information instead of like out of date, um, out of date APIs and stuff. So anyway, I don't know, there's, but then it's it's complicated. It's hard to find like a sweet spot where it's like easy to write and publish, but also getting the benefits of the code. So it's like, if you're interested in that, there's like a million, there's a whole literature about like literate programming is like often what it's called. Um, so it's this style of like writing code that is like produces readable documents. Um, but yeah, it's like a hard, it's a hard problem. Anyway. Yeah. Thank, you have any... Thanks for, thanks for that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Appreciate it. No, thanks for coming. I guess I should probably bow out too. So I'm going to, I'm going to sign off in a minute here, but I don't know. I'm curious if you have any, any other thoughts for the last couple of minutes, Daniel. Thank you so much, Kira. It was so wonderful to, you know, hear an update, it kind of sharing the dilemmas and that was actually so important to hear this update. Um, Thanks. And yeah, so so maybe in a moment we're saying goodbye to the recording and then we can chat a little more. Maybe one more comment is that we are still organizing the real world data group that will begin probably at the end of June. And this group will be a space for people who wish to practice their data and science projects and possibly uh, do it in a way that is also contributing to the, this content of, of the scrapbook and cookbook or other tutorials. And 
and uh, to have this process of a group, uh, different individuals and group, then the friends can share the process of exploration and study together. So this thing will begin in very few weeks. If if anybody listening to this recording is interested in joining the real world data group, then let us chat and. Let us maybe say goodbye to the recording and then a few of us may uh, stay and chat longer. So thank you so much and see you.